so thank you very much for um, joining us today. Um, we uh, actually got such a lot of interest in our faculty um, this autumn with um, around simulation key for Bream 2018, but a lot of comments were around the fact that not everybody could make it. Um, it was um, it was run in London. Not everybody works and lives in London, and uh, quite a few of our clients, yourselves, had suggested uh, that maybe we run it as a webinar. So I'm really pleased to be here today with our speakers um, to rerun uh, the event as a webinar. So hopefully that uh, that also delights you as well. Okay, so um, we over the next hour we'll do the presentations. Uh, myself, I'll do a quick introduction um, around Bream. Some of you uh, will obviously know Bream very well; others, uh, not so much. Um, and also, uh, just really why we're talking about uh, Bream today, uh, why IES is talking about Bream um, uh, at, at the faculty. Uh, I'll then pass over to Gary Nixon, my colleague, who looks after our project management uh, tool uh, for BREAM assessors, IES uh, TAP. After that, uh, we're uh, delighted to be joined by um, our partners at OneClick LCA. Uh, Panu, who's, who's the um, founder and CEO of OneClick LCA, is with us today um, looking at um, uh, using um, OneClick LCA and obviously particularly towards uh, BREAM compliance, although obviously you can use that for any uh, environmental rating system and uh, core LCA uh, as well. Uh, hopefully aiming to finish just the back of uh, one uh, to allow time for questions. Uh, and like I said, we'll pick that up uh, during the session and um, we'll be able to do that and hopefully finish not at 12.30, sorry about that, but at 13.30, at 1.30. Let's uh, crack on then. So really, um, I know that many of you will know what Bream is all about, uh, which is great, but not all of you. So let's have a, a quick look at BREAM, uh, BRE's environmental assessment methods. So it's there are actually other environmental assessment methods. I should say this before we go in. Uh, we're talking primarily about BREAM today because of the release of BREAM 2018 at EcoBuilds uh, earlier in the year. Um, but it, uh, BREAM has the, um, uh, the status of being uh, the first ever assessment methods there, founded in 1990, uh, so coming up for 30 years old. Um, it's compiled of nine different uh, categories, including energy, health and well-being, um, and so on. I will look at that in a little bit more detail. Um, been, they've got registered buildings or registered projects in over 70 countries, uh, something like 80% of the European market share. Um, the European uh, market is quite interesting um, as uh, depending on which country you are will depend on which environmental rating you're going for. Um, so for example, uh, there, are, there are other ratings such as DGMB and LEED and so forth. Thousands of uh, licensed assessors worldwide uh, and using um, the knowledge um, and experience of the BRE to drive uh, the various credits within each of the uh, uh, categories. Uh, we'll maybe touch a little bit on innovation and um, financial revenue uh, towards the end. A little bit there in the screen about how many certificates have actually been issued, just over half a million, um, and uh, just over two and a quarter million buildings registered in over 77 countries. Uh, on the right hand side of the screen there, you can see that um, I'm kind of hinting towards that there are different types of uh, assessments as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so uh, BREAM, has, it's got a global reach, there's no doubt about it, um, over 77 uh, countries, but it's not the only assessment as I mentioned. And for example, in Europe, it's really typical to each particular country. So uh, while you might have um, one particular country um, that focuses towards uh, BREAM, for example, Norway, um, you um, might have lead uh, in, in another country such as Sweden or Italy, uh, DGMB in Denmark or Germany and so forth. Uh, what's quite interesting is that um, it's not exclusive and in some countries you'll find uh, multiple assessments running uh, con concurrently and actually as those that are based in London will know um, there are projects where you might find uh, dual assessment happening where 
maybe uh, on the back of American investment, you'll have LEED and BREAM being certified on the same building. And actually what's interesting with the um, the recent release of, uh, of WELL, the health and well-being assessment uh, rating that you might even have triple assessed uh, buildings. So it's all very, very interesting. Sticking with BREAM uh, or BREAM, I've been told that it is BREAM. Uh, I did hint on the first slide there that there are a number of different assessments. Now, I'm not really talking about location versions, but rather the, the different assessments for different stages of the building's life cycle. Uh, new construction, refurbishment, and fit out are most commonly known types. But uh, you know, do you know about or been involved in communities, infrastructure, or in use? Um, these these versions are all there to capture the full life cycle of the building and aren't standalone. For example, you can achieve credits in new construction for the intention of undertaking credits in in use. Um, and a good example would be. Uh, Bream 2018 New Construction UK, where in the Energy One credit, uh, there is um, credits for doing uh, monitoring verification and Bream in use. Uh, so it's quite it's quite interesting that the whole idea is that the entire life cycle of the, the building is is picked up in these assessments. Just very quickly, and what the assessment actually entails, um, as mentioned before, uh, the assessment is broken down into a number of categories. Uh, as you can see here, energy, health and well-being, innovation, land use, materials. Materials is a key one. Uh, management, pollution, transport, waste and water. Each individual category is then split up further into credits and each credit then has uh, a value or a number of potential credits that you can achieve overall. Uh, and really the name of the game is the more credits you achieve, the better the assessment score you achieve overall for, for the building. Now, um, each credit is weighted, and I just thought it would be interesting to show you this, simply to show you with Bream UK 2018, the latest version, um, how closely weighted energy and materials are, 16% and 15%. Um, and yeah, health and well-being just there at 14. So we'll talk a little bit about that later on. So that's a little bit about Bream and what it is, for those that don't know. I'm assuming most of you do. Uh, just a little uh, insight into why we use Bream. So, um, so why specify the use of Bream or other voluntary energy or environmental rating systems? Bream has different benefits for different stakeholders, and a couple of examples might be um, the, like the financial perspective for developers. So, um, the for developers' perspective. Uh, the 2013 report by the World Green Building Council, making the business case for green building, suggests that certified green buildings have sale prices increased by up to approximately 30% compared to conventionally code compliant buildings. Now, this is based on a best case scenario, uh, and it will be interesting when we get more data to know exactly uh, where Broom can actually do there, but that's interesting. So. From a developer's perspective, there's a value to, to having to using the likes of Bream uh, to increase the overall asset value. Uh, the owner's perspective is a different, slightly different take on it. So according to that same report by the World Green Building Council, uh, Bream certification can increase rental rates for buildings up to 24.9% compared to conventional code compliant buildings. So for owners running that, they're more valuable occupiers want those buildings why do they want them i mean typically we'll talk about that but typically that's based on uh, lower uh, energy costs um better building design in terms of the occupants and so forth so we'll, we'll look into there but putting the developer and owner side to one side why Bream? And that there's been a lot of focus over the last couple of years, and namely really on the back of a, a shift in how we view buildings from the uh, the release of the well standards, which really focuses not on the building itself, but on the occupants that are operating within, within those buildings. Uh, so what's quite interesting here is that um, it, from an occupant's uh, perspective, I, health and well-being is, is, is key. 
so we can see here in the slides what we're trying to show that um, 90 percent of a typical business's operating cost isn't actually the building itself but is the staff within the building so 90 percent and then you're looking at a breakdown of that last 10 percent across the running costs and the uh, rental costs of that building and so if by using green we're able to make better buildings healthier buildings then uh, that's that's that could be a real key consideration uh, in terms of productivity within within that building. Of course, what about designers? Well, of course, we benefit from additional revenue streams, but we more importantly, it helps us to design better buildings, buildings which serve their occupants. OK, so that's a little bit just the context of Bream and why we're talking about it today. Um, what I want to do now is really focus on why we're talking about it today at a IES event. Okay, so the first thing, not to be too brutal about it, but if you're involved with Bream, um, there will be a pressure to achieve as many credits as you can. Uh, and IES um, should be part of your arsenal there. So the first key point here, what we're looking at at this table in front of you, on the left hand column is the different BREAM schemes that are available and then you can see from left to right at the top the, um, the different categories and the amount of credits that you can achieve uh, using IES and one click LCA and we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, and you can see the total amount of credits on the right hand side there. Now the first thing to say that there is nothing else that we're aware of that comes close to the amount of credits that you can achieve using this as a solution. So being brutal about it, if you're like viewing Bream as a, as a credits game and you're there to get as many credits as possible, then IS would be a good place to go. And we'll talk about that why in a little bit. Um, it's interesting comparing 2014 to 2018 that the amount of credits gone up by um, more than 25%. Uh, so simulation is becoming more of a key part of these assessments. As these assessments go from um, sort of abstract compliance to analysis based, let's put it that way. Or uh, we do that for a number of uh, ways and we'll talk about that soon. But one of the things I pointed out at the start was do you remember the weightings between materials and energy and how close they were? at 16 and 15 percent well look at the difference between mat one between uk 2014 2018 can you see that so in 2014 for mat one you could achieve up to two credits now in 2018 you can achieve up to 10. so that's a significant change and shift on emphasis of uh materials and a lot of that to do at our faculty uh bre were there and they were explaining that um, of course, it's very important to focus on the operational energy of the building, but that's only a small part of the overall building's uh, carbon footprint or the sustainability picture according to it. Uh, and actually, you could find on a t any given building, uh, two thirds of its overall carbon emissions are already there in the building at day one of occupancy through the choices we make through materials and the systems that we're putting into that building. And so while you could be focusing on energy on that one third and, and, uh, and doing that, actually you could be missing out if you're not undertaking LCA, uh, this key part of the overall building's uh, carbon emissions. So that's something that's, that's kind of vital, which is why um, uh, Panu is going to be talking about LCA there. Uh, so we do this through um, different things. So, so through uh, not just uh, the virtual environment, but additional technologies like uh, IES TAP. Gary will talk about this in a while. Uh, that's our project management tool for BREAM assessors plus other assessments. We do that through uh, partnerships, and we're delighted to have our partnership with uh, uh, Panu and One Click LCA, um, a neat tool for not just MAT1 compliance, but many other things. We'll look at that. Uh, I should also point out that while we're um, I'm uh, going to have a look at One Click LCA today. There will be a dedicated free webinar for LCA next week, and I'll share details of that afterwards. Uh, but of course, the virtual environment itself is key for 
compliance with, with BREEAM and other environmental ratings. Uh, but it's not just being able to provide the analysis, it's the way that we do it as well that's, that's key. So if you look at, for example, uh, the visual comfort credit, um, there is a requirement there to do uh, dynamic daylighting and within Radiance um, and IES, it's got automatic reporting in there. You can see there in the red box, it's slightly grayed out there, um, but it will do an automatic report uh, to show whether you comply or not with that credit post-processing. So it's these little things in there that all make a difference. Okay, second point, I've got five points. So this is the second point. I'm not here saying that BREEAM and other green building assessments are perfect. Um, we're encouraged by the changes uh, to the likes of uh, the Energy One credit in BREEAM 2018, uh, but we did feel that BRE and BREEAM uh, could have gone a little bit further. So there, are, uh, so currently, um, the the for BREEAM 2018, we had hoped for the Energy One credit that they would shift the uh, methodology away from uh, national compliance. So the um, to achieve those nine credits and Energy One, you're still using uh, the SBIM and national calculation methodology um, uh, for that. And of course, these are well known not to be uh, operational energy performance figures and are a key part in the performance gap uh, or the gulf between predicted and operational energy use. Um, at IES, you know, we actually we suggest uh, and, and encourage designers to move away from compliance calculations towards a more robust analysis methodology such as ASHRAE 90.1, um, which can be used to attract, you know, maybe uh, maybe twice as many credits uh, in a way. Of course, that's a simpler way of doing it. It's a more in-depth calculation. Um, it's using it's going to use more 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 resource time, uh, so there'll be possibly an increase in fee as well. Just a little bit more on that. Um, we think that the uh, the number of credits now with with BREEAM 2018, the, the guidance note 32 strategic approach appears to be incentivizing more detailed energy modeling and reward accurate predictions of energy, which is great. However, the, the number of BREEAM credits available at the post occupancy stage is only four credits, and that's a lot less than the current modeling strategy that rewards uh, at energy one of nine credits. So um, I guess there's a question there about, couldn't it be the other way around or shouldn't it be the other way around? Uh, and, and as designers, and this is really up for you to think about, is, is, there, is there an additional risk that zero credits could be awarded where the actual energy performance is worse than the low end of the energy performance range, meaning that there's a perceived risk in design teams targeting or buying these credits, given that they may never actually be achieved. So we feel that there has been a good shift in the right direction um, in BREEAM 2018, particularly with the, the energy credit, but actually maybe it's time to, it would have been a good opportunity to go the extra step. So what, what do I mean by that? Well. Um, I talked about ASHRAE 90.1, like we've got the technology, we've got the technology there in the industry to, to do much more accurate modelling, uh, to reduce that performance gap, um, to use the same technology at the design stage uh, and in the operational stage. We've got the, for example, IES, I should be saying, um, we've got the methodology as well, TM54, we've got that, it's been out for years. ASHRAE 90.1, again, been out for years, used by other assessment method methodologies such as, as LEED. Uh, we've got the data for years, um, even just through uh, uh, BREEAM 2014 and 2011, you've been awarded credits for supplying energy per square metre uh, data back to the BRE. So what, what drivers is it that we're missing here? And uh, would it, wouldn't it have been good if maybe BREEAM had just pushed that forward and moved away from just the compliance calculation. Maybe that's something we can lobby for for the next version. And just as a, this point really sort of is an add on to point two, but point three is really about education, about understanding these things. Um, and, and actually look, there's real revenue streams that are able to us as, as designers as well. Um, there was a really interesting uh, article in the Sibsey Journal uh, by Kate Doherty from WSP, who uh, was discussing uh, the, the size of fees awarded to full operational studies. 
uh, and saying that fees of up to £30,000 for a TM54. Clearly, that's a very different level or scale of fee compared to that, what you would think about towards the um, NCM, uh, SBIM uh, um, uh, methodology, which you might be looking at something at a sixth of that fee, um, or, or at least a third. So if we understood that and be able to work with the likes of Bream, maybe um, by, by moving to a more onerous energy calculations, such as TM54 or 90.1, actually that would also help uh, the, the industry, particularly here in the UK, uh, in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of fees as well. And then what other credits could we be doing and charging fees for? Two more points, I'm going to very quickly go through this and then uh, we'll move on. Um, so point four, uh, another point is that you don't need to be doing this all yourself. There's lots of support in the industry uh, there for you, whether that's from ourselves here at IES or uh, One Click LCA or the likes of Sweco. Um, where there's lots of support around about to make sure you you achieve the full potential in your dream assessment for that project. Um, but finally, really, it's more of a, a thought than a point. But really, isn't it more than um, credits and costs. So going back to the start, of course, there are be benefits for utilising Bream for developers and owners and designers and so on. But actually, I yes, we believe it's more than revenue and credits. It's truly about supporting better building design and operation. And don't we all want to design better, healthier, more productive buildings which serve the occupants as best they can? Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to hand over to Gary Nixon, who's going to talk a little bit about IS. Uh, tap. Well, thanks very much for your time today, everybody. Um, as Neil has said, I'll quickly just go through part of the offering that we have as IES. So we talked about virtual environment and a lot of the evidence um, generating elements of, of what we can bring there. Uh, and now I'm going to focus on IES TAP, our online project management system just for a few minutes, especially as we're looking at Brian 2018 and uh, what's on offer there. So uh, just to start off to introduce myself, my name is, is Gary Nixon and I'm the product manager for IES TAP. Uh, my contact details are there, I'll put them up at the end as well, it's gary.nixon at iesve.com. Now in terms of how we approach this with IES TAP, uh, we were thinking about how can we uh, improve the whole process for everybody involved in the uh, BREAM certification process. So as Neil has talked through, there's so many different credits and different things you have to make your way through. And what we thought about is the different stakeholders. So we've got the BRE, uh, who obviously are the people who are putting the schemes together and it, it takes a lot of work on their part. Uh, you've got the building owners, you've got, um, and they have their own drivers like Neil has alluded to uh, as to why they go after these things. You've got the developers, you've got the contractors, you've got BREAM assessors, uh, you've got project team members uh, made up of, of a number of different members, architects and engineers being just two examples of those. As all of the different stakeholders of people involved in this whole process come together. Uh, the dilemma for the authority themselves who puts together a green building rating system, in this case we're looking at BREAM, all of the different authorities face a very similar dilemma. On the one hand, you must have a very rigorous process to ensure appropriate standards are met, so you have to have something that's meaningful and, and actually by gaining that accreditation is of commercial value at the end of the day. Uh, so in terms of reduced energy costs, in terms of higher uh, uh, services for the, the occupants and environments, better quality environments for the occupants and so on. On the flip side, you've got the more rigorous uh, process involved, which brings more difficulty and it also brings increased cost because you have to go through that whole process. Uh, so it makes it hard for, for the market uh, to work through. There's also the risk of less people using the rating tools, the more onerous or, or, or hard it is to make your way through them and the higher the bar goes. So uh, there is that balancing act. In terms of some of the other issues that are faced by uh, those involved in the green building rating tools. The process is very detailed and time consuming, resulting in additional project costs. 
wide range of knowledge required resulting in the involvement of a number of additional people in the project team and then you've got the coordination of the project team which can be time consuming and problematic. So as we had a look at these aspects we brought this IES TAP for BRIAM systems the market back in 2012 at EcoBuild in the UK. The idea of the online system was really to try and bring some more tools alongside the virtual environment to help all the different stakeholders as they engage with the process. So IES TAP for BRIAM manages the whole project team through the assessment process directly through to the BRE for QA and BRIAM certification. So each of those different uh, people involved in the process now get benefit of using this type of online structure where they can see in a transparent way how the project is moving and making its way through to certification and making sure that as a team you're meeting your certification goal. Uh, in terms of each particular stakeholder, as if uh, pointed out, BRIAM owners, developers and contractors, it gives them the ability to go and monitor the projects, track them and communicate with the assessors and those involved in the actual project itself. So it means that for those high level people who ultimately want a good product at the end of the day and have got targets that they must achieve, it gives them a lowered um, sense of risk because they're able to see more clearly exactly how that project is moving towards the particular goal that needs to be achieved. In terms of the BRIAM assessors, they can visualize the whole project process, they can collaborate amongst the team easier, uh, they can manage everybody towards the goal and make sure they stay on top of everything, and then ultimately reporting. So communication there again, reporting amongst the team and ultimately up to the, the owner as well. The design team members then, it provides them with all the information that they need to go and actually give high quality evidence to support a high quality build. So uh, they go in and they provide all this information. The system uh, allows the ability to go in and list out exactly what's needed and helps the team through that whole process and gives them focus and make sure that uh, things aren't missed. In terms of uh, the system and how we structured it, uh, we've we've got a number of systems supported on the system at the moment. We've got BRIAM, as I say, we've been uh, supporting BRIAM since 2012. In 2013, we brought the, the lead system to the market. And then in 2014, we brought the Green Building Council of South Africa certification engine, which is built on the platform as a, of IES TAP, where we support uh, the Green Star South Africa scheme. So each of those are currently supported on the system and we're constantly developing it to enhance uh, the entire project team assessors experience. In terms of where we sit here in terms of the the virtual environment, the online project management system. On the very bottom here of this slide, you've got the analysis credits there on the left uh, bottom of the slide. Uh, and you've people generating that evidence using tools such as the virtual environment, going in and quantifying the impact of their decisions at the design stages of the, the project. You can use alternative software to do that as well. And then of course there's non-analysis credits too. So that's the bottom area. Then as you're generating this evidence, you're pushing it up into the cloud-based IS TAP system where you're gathering everything, you're managing your entire team, um, you've got dashboards to uh, be able to see clearly exactly what's going on. And then ultimately the assessor who goes through and, and approves everything and makes sure everything is in line with what it needs to be, then pushes it up to the, uh, the BREQA team who then goes through and does their spot checks and makes sure everything is in line with where it needs to be and ultimately certifies the project once it's been through that rigorous process. I'll quickly touch on some of the key features that the system brings. So in terms of the system itself, it's obviously online. You can access all of your projects in one place. So whether you're an owner or whether you are an assessor, you've got a portfolio of projects that you can just go in and at a glance, scroll down through and see all the pertinent information about those in one place, easily accessible. In terms of integration with the BRE QA processes for all of the different schemes that we support um, right up until BRIAM 
2018. In fact, you've got this idea of having your tracking of the project the whole way through and ultimately pushing the project directly to the BREQ18 through the IES TAP system uh, so that you can actually push it to the BRE. They can review your your project and then come back to you and let you know exactly how you've done and if, if you need to go and deal with some issues you can deal with those. We've enhanced the system recently um, so that we have full BRIAM projects integration so if you're familiar with the BRIAM project system which is a relatively new online system that the BRE uh, have added to the tools that they offer uh, it's primarily used to there's a number of different features on BRIAM projects but in this context um, it's where we now submit the information to so we've got a front end on that where you can project manage uh, your team and, and gather all of your evidence and then ultimately track that and then submit it into the Brian project system which happens because you've got integration uh, directly to Brian projects so that you can just it puts it in the exact pots that you need the information to get to uh, on the on the Brian project system we support you know pre-assessment design stage and post construction so all stages are supported on this online tool uh, and we've got nice neat features like project scenarios where as you go through the project as you communicate as a team as you try out different scenarios you can compare those easily and communicate the benefits of each of those uh, types of scenarios very quickly and make good informed decisions uh, in terms, sorry, I had a few slides on the scenarios there. In terms of the team members, uh, then as I've said earlier on, there's it really alleviates any kind of ambiguity about who's responsible for what. Responsibilities are laid out, everything is there, everyone knows exactly what's expected of them. So it navigates everybody through the uh, different requirements that are needed to be met in order to get this high quality certification that you're wanting to get at the end of the day. Um, so that's all part of the system as well. And then you, you upload all of your evidence online securely and and then ultimately uh, the different uh, assessors and team members interact and the items are approved or rejected and ultimately uh, then passed up to the BRE. Everything is tracked on the system. So on the right hand side, you can get a sense of the interface of what the IS TAP system looks like uh, with everything being tracked, both in terms of the evidence itself and also the credits that have been achieved. And all the time, nice little features in there, such as automated emails to keep people on track and update them, remind them that they've got things that they need to attend to. And, uh, and then also we've got a really nice referencing system in there so that if you want to download all your information at the end of the project, it's just simply downloaded or at any time throughout the project into nicely organized, structured folders where uh, you can go and see each of your pieces of evidence categorized in the appropriate place with a reference number associated. As I've said, it's fully integrated into the BRE process and we've got a number of reports that you can generate. In terms of success stories of who's been using this particular tool, uh, so we've got Buig in the UK, who's obviously um, Buig Construction, a global player in construction and services, which builds and operates buildings and structures which improve the quality of people's living and working environment. Always very important, keeping the end goal in mind, where we're wanting to really improve the actual environment that people are going to be in for so much of their, their working life, potentially, and uh, reduce its impact or, and make it a, a positive impact on the environment around it. So Buig has testified that the transparent way IES TAP shows us where we are against credit has helped us to eliminate the risk of a project failing to achieve the desired sustainability rating. So a big issue for these types of people uh, where you've got uh, big risks of not meeting uh, a particular target. So that's where a system like this in the mix really helps. In terms of Delta Green, um, so Delta Green have been using IS TAP for five years and they now manage all of their projects to, through uh, our, our system, the IS TAP system. So the designers of mechanical and electrical building services, uh, they include thermal modeling and a suite of environmental assessment techniques, including BRIAM and Code for Sustainable Homes assessments. Uh, so Delta Green 
have testified that with IES TAP, the evidence is now sitting waiting for me against the correct credits when I log in. The system allows me to review evidence instantly, comment, and then update the system automatically. So I don't have to go through the process of updating anything manually. And it's important to note that with any kind of technology, there's a process with teams um, getting up to speed with using a system, an online system, a tracking system like IES TAP. As everybody on this uh, session is aware, technology is changing and there's more coming to the market, uh, but our own, um, our own industry is changing so rapidly now with BIM and all the different aspects that are coming with that, that we, we must change and we must think about ways of improving the way that we work using the technology that's now available to us, IES TAP being one of those. In terms of GWP, an award-winning BRIAM assessor, and um, they've been using the uh, IES TAP system really for some time now. And they've uh, played a key role in successful BRIAM award-winning developments in 2008, 2010, and 2012, with company director Barry Rankin being awarded BRIAM Assessor of the Year in 2013 and 2015. There again, testifying to using the system on all of their projects now as well. Uh, ISTAP has made our business more profitable by making the BRIAM assessment process flow more efficiently and quickly than ever. And I know, talk to Barry, he testifies that uh, the ISTAP system has really helped them to increase that profit and, and make sure that, that BRIAM is, is something that's absolutely efficient and effective in terms of the process, as well as the great outcomes that they've been achieving as BRIAM assessors too. In terms of uh, after today's session, if you have interest if, in IS TAP and you'd like more information, of course, contact myself or any of, of the guys in IS TAP, which is gary.nixon at IESV.com. Go onto our website, www.iestap.com, and sign up for a free 30 day trial. Um, alongside the virtual environment, it's a very powerful uh, piece of software. So, thank you so much for your time today. And we'll be taking questions at the end, which if anyone has any questions, do type them into the chat box uh, and we'll be, uh, Neil will be looking at that and, and we can answer any questions at the end of the session. So thanks so much. Yeah, that's great, Gary. Thank you. Okay, so um, Panu, I'm just going to um, put, put you as panelist there and unmute you uh, as well. Um, so just as an introduction, um, Panu is uh, CEO, CEO of OneClick LCA. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, Panu here today, but actually um, IS uh, has partnered with OneClick LCA. Um, their uh, product and service is uh, global leading, and um, we've recently uh, had IS uh, V integration, which is great. So um, I'll pass you over to Panu. Thank you. Thank you, Niall. So uh, yeah, I'm Panu Pasanen. I'm from OneClick LC. I'm going to be talking primarily about uh, BRIAM new construction 2018, and there's a quick live demo uh, towards the end. So I will um, try to catch up a bit in terms of timing, so we get to it uh, straight away. Uh, the point is, LCA when it's used in a business context, it has to be affordable and it has to be easy. This can be achieved by automation, uh, and you have to have an approved software, of course, to do that. This is what we do. We provide you an easy to use software that allows you to automate your last cycle assessment and use the results commercially in your BRIAM context so you can deliver better buildings and better business and deliver value added services to your projects. That's it. We are um, dominant in uh, most markets in Europe um, in terms of market share. We are also doing good uh, in North America. Uh, we are particularly proud in the UK that. Uh, most of the larger uh, specialists have chosen to partner with us and also BRE uh, is using our platform for uh, life cycle analysis. The big thing is this, uh, when you do design, uh, you want to get value out of your design. So you don't want to recreate information and redo everything all the time. With one click LCA, whatever information you have invested in and whatever tools you have in place, you can pull in the information. So we have about 11 different integrations all available commercially, which means that as a consultant, when you work with IES, you get your data from IES, but when you work on another project where you have a different role, uh, when you're asked to assess certain things, uh, maybe you get a BIM model, you can also use those. We provide you flexibility in terms of input data to make this uh, faster and easier for yourself. Uh, second thing is the data. 
it's very very good to compare a wood against concrete, but it doesn't get you really far uh, in sense of, for example, for uh, of Durian, where you are required to assess several options for superstructure. Uh, you also have options to uh, compare building services and uh, uh, substructure elements for additional credits. That requires data. We do have the impact database. It's fine. That can be used for benchmarking, but it's a small database. It's 260 data points. We have about, uh, I think right now, we have about 11,000 uh, building material data points in our database, which means that when you study your building options and you talk with your client and they are going to ask you, uh, what would I do? You can go and you can check, should I take now or should I take is over? Or you can check whether you should take, uh, you know, Tarmac or whether you should take Hansen. You can check if the brand has EPDs, which products perform better from an environmental point of view, and use that to advise your customer, and you can use that uh, to design a better project, and you can use that to uh, deliver premium options and to earn the premium credits. We manage the data updates, we verify the data, and we enhance it. And we, our intention is to put all the qualifying data in the world in the database. Of course, we are always lagging a bit behind, but we are uh, doing pretty good overall. Certification is how you monetize this kind of services. So if you are working in a UK business, obviously Briam is um, probably your predominant um, business case for this type of analysis. But uh, if you happen to export work to Europe, uh, to Asia Pacific, to North America, or if you, if you happen to work on infrastructure process or whatever, we do have tools allowing you to meet uh, requirements of those systems. In the UK, another particular application which we have uh, is uh, tool for high speed 2 so we have a specific tool just for that program uh, uh, which is fully past 2080 compliant and premium infrastructure compliant as well so the point is we are providing a mechanism which allows you to do more with less time and use that wherever your business takes you if you work nationally it's fine uh, we have everything you need for uk but we also are able to help you in most uh, markets where you have demand for this type of services. Right, so um, going into Briam UK uh, 2018, it was a fairly big change uh, in terms of materials uh, credits. It was uh, uh, well prepared, I think, from a BRE point of view, but it's very new. So uh, people are not yet um, well versed in this, I would say. And uh, the first thing you need to know is that you need to have approved software. You can find one click LCA directly or via IES in the list of approved software. Uh, if you check the list of, from BRE for recognized building LCA tools, and you can use it for every part of the credit. Uh, there's two different tools actually. So we have impact compliant, which is used for benchmarking purposes. And then there's the uh, non-impact compliant, which you use for options, or we recommend that you use that for options. In terms of credits, you can target. We can support up to 25 credits in total. Um, I'm not going to walk through this in, uh, in, in great level of detail, but there's a lot you can go for. But the more important question is, what should you go for? And the answer is, in our opinion, you should at minimum go for nine credits in MAT1 LCA. Uh, we had a very good presentation from uh, Stroma in September, where uh, Stroma explained that they have been able to place the MAT1 LCA in all their projects, and they expect to be continuing doing, doing so. The business case is that you can get engaged early on in the project, and you can secure the credits, so they are not going to be subject to revision in a construction phase, which of course gives you um, certainty of the level of certification you are going to be able to achieve, which is of course a huge benefit for projects. However, if you do the MAT1 LCA, you will have put together a lot of information which allows you to do other material credits, including durability, efficiency, EPD credits, as well as the first part of the uh, MAN02 LCC for elemental lifecycle costing and our capital cost. So this is actually the sweet spot, depending, of course, uh, what's the target level of certification for your project. Pick the parts which are uh, the most optimal, but this is really the uh, where you have an extremely good value proposition and you are also able as an assessor or so, uh, as a brilliant professional get engaged in a project early, which is of course critical for being uh, able to deliver a successful project. 
we are extremely pleased uh, by this partnership with IAS. So uh, energy is clearly a key for uh, building sustainability. Uh, building which is not healthy for a user is uh, pretty dubious. Uh, on the other hand, the importance of materials is extreme. Uh, buildings become more energy efficient and the energy grid decarbonizes. With this partnership, you can have a holistic picture of what you should be doing for your project and what you should be doing for Brium. And uh, the tables for the credits, you can find them uh, also online. So I'm not going to go through this, but we can really bring you to a completely different level with these two tools uh, in any Brium project anywhere. We have done this for some time. So the software was approved in uh, uh, late March, I think. Uh, for Brium 2018 was previously approved for all the previous versions. Um, so we are not going to go through all the uh, different ways how you can speed up the uh, Brium analysis, but I will walk you through a few, one, uh, few ones uh, really quickly. So the first one, there's a workflow. You don't have to know how to do everything. You can just check in the workflow, follow the steps, and get it done. Second, you can use IES. And uh, here I'm going to jump to a demonstration. So uh, I have my IES here. I have one to Kelsey integration script. And uh, if I want to upload materials and energy to perform an LCA, I'm going to click the button, run LCA. And now the results are being delivered to the online service. I have the choice of uh, generating a new study or uh, Reusing an existing study, I'm just going to create a new one. And the whole process is highly automated. Um, the software analyzes automatically your inputs, assigns them uh, the most uh, appropriate environmental impacts, which you can, of course, revise if you have to, and delivers you LCA results in less than a minute from your IS model. In Brium, um, you need to report them in a certain way, certain way and you need to check that um, you, have certain, you have the minimum scope of assessment. The software allows you also to edit uh, the data set uh, independently of um, the IES model, which in turn means that uh, if you have foundations or uh, structural elements or things like this, which you are not uh, requiring for a ther uh, thermodynamical simulation, you can add them in the model easily. Uh, here is our LCA. If you want to edit the materials, very simple. You are able to open and access the list and continue working with it to add anything you might wish, uh, want to add. Uh, for example, foundations. And finally, you can report the uh, results to uh, for brilliant purposes very easily. I'm not going to complete uh, the study um, in interest of time. So when you're ready with your results, you will very simply generate the results for Brium. And all the outputs, they are Brium approved. So you don't have to rework them manually. You don't have to do nothing. You just submit and you're done. That's a quick demo. You can do the same with Revit. You can do the same with the uh, simplified simulation tool we have. You can use our construction uh, library to do simple optioneering, so you don't have to redesign technically every single element you want to consider. You'll find any supplier you want to work with. Visualize, generate reports, do LCC. And there's a lot more. I uh, won't go into more of this uh, right now, So, but if you want to Check it out in a bit more detail in pretty much a week's time. Uh, we have one hour webinar to which we welcome you if you are interested to learn more. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Panu. That was excellent. And um, just shows you how quick you can um, take the data from the VE model into uh, one click LCA. Um, and, uh, and I guess, and I guess the, the thing is that um, the, with such emphasis in terms of credit weighting on the MAT1 credit. Um, there's a lot of, lot of assessors out there 
wondering, uh, I'm not too sure about this credit, can, can we go for it or do we just avoid it and try and concentrate on other known credits? But I think because it's so highly weighted, we, we don't have that option anymore, do we? And so having a solution like that, that's so easy to use, um, is uh, is great to have. So thanks um, for, for the demo as well. Okay, so we uh, that's the end of the presentations and uh, it just gives us a little bit of time for questions. So if you've got any questions, then now's the time to um, uh, open up that questions tab and, and ask them. I'll go first. There was a question there asking in terms of that we, we talked at the start about a number of different energy modeling uh, methodologies. So we talked about TM54, we talked about SPEM and NCM, which is a UK specific uh, approach for compliance. Um, and ASHRAE 90.1. Uh, there was a question there in terms of uh, are you able to perform all of that within IAS virtual environment? Um, yes, of course you can. I'm IAS uh, virtual environment is a, a global leading energy modeling tool and can uh, let you uh, model to the, uh, the highest degree. So that was a bit of an easy one for me. There was a question there, Gary. There was a question about IES TAP. Uh, there was a question around about what what is the price of, of of TAP to use that? Okay, so the idea of it is that it's a flexible structure in time in terms of of payment schedule, but uh, we operate a monthly fee per project. Uh, there's no hidden cost. It's just a per project fee as you need to use the system on a project you pay for it. We charge £25 per month uh, plus VAT and that lasts for two years. So it works out at £600 across two years and then for every month thereafter on the project you pay just five, uh, £5 a month just for data storage. Uh, we've got a number of options to suit the way that you guys work whether you want to have a, a shorter more flexible type term so whether it's monthly payments or whether a, a little less flexible so it's annual payments or then of course you can do an upfront payment which is a little bit cheaper uh, for those projects that you're sure gonna, are going to go on to maybe three years or so you know you can avail of a cheaper kind a rate for those kind of projects so do talk to us and we'd be happy to chat you through the different options we have and we've also got a reward scheme for our customers as well so for every five paid projects you put on there in a calendar year you get one free project as well so you end up getting uh, some benefits in that way too okay great thanks gary and um i mean obviously there's there's the argument of um a cost saving in, in time and things with the Bream Assessor by using IES TAP. But I hear quite often that Bream Assessors push that cost to the client and, and um, so they, they take that out as well. Is that something that you hear too? Yeah, I, I think what we would always recommend looking at, as you say, is the time that the actual uh, it, there's benefits for everyone involved. So yes, some people are included in the overall fee and that's that's quite fine. There are benefits for the owners and the entire project team in general. Um, the assessor, of course, will directly benefit too in terms of the reporting time that uh, it saves on them, as well as the ability just to manage that, that project in a more effective way. So we definitely have had our customers testify to the system, saving them a significant amount of time and allowing them to take on more projects than they will be able to do otherwise. Uh, but, um, you know, whether you pass that to the client as part of the overall cost, they will benefit or whether you, you take that as yourself, uh, either way, you're going to end up with, um, you know, it being a good investment for you as you, you work on your project. Okay. And just another uh, quick one, Gary, on IS tap, is it possible to set frequency of email reminder? What about schedule phase of project and the premium phrases? Yeah, so the email reminders are there uh, really just to be friendly little reminders as something becomes required on the system. In terms of the frequency of those, you get one seven days before the actual item is due and then you get one on the day the item is actually due itself what we tend to recommend is we've got this fantastic scheduling system in there uh, which allows you to create a customized schedule which puts in different phases and you can associate then the different pieces of evidence or criteria to that particular phase that means you've got one date uh, so let's say it's the architect needs to upload x y and z you can associate with that 
phase date. And so they get one email reminder. They go into the responsibility section, deal with those within those seven days and then then finish it off if they haven't done it already. Um, so, yeah, there's some really good scheduling features in there. Uh, and we've also got REBA stages in there as well, if you want to, with, with all the criteria associated with the relevant REBA stage, too. So you've got different options for how you want to structure scheduling your project. So definitely check it out in the trial. OK, that's great. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate that. Um, I think there will be some more questions later on, so we'll uh, come to them as we do. Um, OK, so the, uh, there was a question around, I mentioned in my presentation around about in IES that there were certain features that were reporting for, for Bream, like auto reporting and in Radiance. Um, so the question was around where is that function? So within Radiance within VE 2018, I'm talking about here, uh, what I showed in that that um, uh, that picture, it's actually within there. So when you do the calculation as you would do for Bream, you'll automatically have in the settings uh, the option to select the auto report for Bream compliance. Um, so you should find it not a problem. You can always get in touch with me and I can um, do a demo or, or show you how that works. Um, uh, that's not a problem. So, uh, Panu, we've got some questions on um, LCA. Do you have different data for different regions? Yeah, so uh, we have our main, uh, main two main databases, one for North America, one for Europe. And uh, within Europe, we have national databases for all the countries where one exists. Uh, the European data set is very strong, so it's about, <clears throat> I think, 8,000 data points in North America. One is uh, somewhere between um, around 2,000, I think. Uh, extremely uh, good in, uh, in the bigger European countries. Then the Eastern Europe is a bit less covered. That's that's good. In fact, there's been quite a few questions for you. So, um, there, and there was a, there was a specific question towards Italy. What about the adaption of the data for Italy? Are you able to use one-click LCA for compliance within Italy? Yeah, you can use it in, uh, anywhere. So, uh, within Brigham International, uh, there's a methodology which is called local compensation, and uh, we have a, a Brigham uh, approved method for doing that, which basically adapts generic data. To the location even if you're working in you know mexico or serbia or wherever where there's no local data uh, and that works works just fine okay that's great and uh there, there have been a a number of queries regarding uh cost for one click lca now i know that that's not as simple as gary's costing for is tap but um do you want to just explain the costing sites? Right. So, um, so if you want to go for uh, one-click LCA, uh, we have a package specifically for Brium UK, which is called One-Click LCA UK, uh, and uh, we have three options. We have starter, we have a uh, business and expert, um, which uh, provide different levels of integration and capability, and then we have Brium add-on. Uh, so you are looking at uh, at the lower end. Lower end, you are looking at uh, investment of. Uh, uh, between, uh, let's say, around about um, two and a half k for unlimited annual use for as much premium as you like, and uh, then uh, if you go for more integrations and more capabilities, uh, it's between three and four k a year. And important thing is, this is going to be mainstream. You can make it mainstream, and the business model is uh, very good for doing that. So you do as much as you like, put it on all your projects. It's not variable. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And uh, anybody that's looking for specific costs, um, because there is slight differences aren't there between UK or different countries in Europe and so on, um, then just to get in touch with uh, obviously One Click LCA or IES and we can provide that for you. Um, just another question there. Uh, there was a question around um, the demo that you showed and I just asked you about the imported model uh, within one click, is it the building model used within IES for energy modeling? Yeah, uh, so uh, when you import the IES uh, model, it takes automatically all the materials you have set for your uh, thermal components uh, to separate your zones, and uh, you also can choose simulation to import, import, so you are able to bring also the energy if you like. Yeah, and that's and that's really neat, and that's a key thing. It's a, it's a great integration between the two platforms, um, and so and I guess the, the the big benefit there to the user is 
not redoing um, setting up models and data so forth. You're able just to make use of that um, that model that you were doing for maybe the Energy One credit within Bream. You're able to use that directly for the LCA, and um, so so productive on that side. Um, great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Panu. Um, just a couple of little questions. So there's a couple of people asking about IES impact and one click LCA. So for those that hadn't heard, um, we have stopped. Um, IES impact and uh, in favour of our partnership with One Click LCA. So hopefully that answers that. Um, there's also another question around about IES and IES TAP. Are they independent? Um, well, th we obviously supply both. Um, they do work together depending on different assessment methods. So clearly today we're talking about Bream, but if we were talking about LEED, you're able to connect your V model to the IES TAP. Uh, assessment and be able to export your data direct up to that. If that was something that enough people were interested in doing for Bream, we would do that as well. Um, and there was, following the faculty event in London, some questions asking for uh, almost a, a revival of the Bream Navigator that we used to have for 2008 and to bring that out. And that is something that we're looking at. So if you are interested in um, uh, that and, and it would be, then uh, maybe you could uh, let me know. That would be good. I see. I think that's just about all the questions actually, and I think we have now more or less run out of time. So really, I just want to um, thank everybody for joining us today. This wouldn't be a success if we didn't have anybody to talk to. So thank you very much for uh, bearing with us over the last uh, ninety minutes or so. Uh, also, uh, we wouldn't have anything to talk to if we didn't have our speakers. So thank you very much to. Uh, Gary, uh, Panu and Kartik, um, thank, thank you very much for giving up your time today to join us and, and support uh, another faculty event. It's been, um, it's been really useful having you with us. Um, if there is any questions that anybody would like to ask, uh, I've given my email address there in the chat box, neil.gibson at um, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions or put you in touch with the, uh, the relevant speaker, uh, if that's the case. But um, other than that, uh, thank you very much, everyone, and um, hear from you soon. Take care. Have a good day.